In our first reading, we hear God speaking to us. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. I think if we look at the game plan or the strategy that the devil uses to attack us, I think that there are two ways that he does that. The first, if it will work, is the devil would like to try and get us to despair and to doubt ourselves, to worry about what's going on inside of ourselves. The devil obviously has the power to suggest things to us, not to make us feel one thing or another, but to suggest ideas. And so oftentimes he will try to attack us and get us to think, well, I'm not very holy, or I can't overcome the certain addiction that I'm struggling with right now, whether it's alcohol or pornography or drugs or whatever. He can suggest to us that we're too proud, that we've committed some sin that's unforgivable, that God doesn't love us. Whatever it may be, he gets us to doubt the fact that we are lovable, that God cares for us and has saved us. Gets us, to, hopefully, to try and give up and to doubt the fact that we have been spared, that we have been saved by Christ. And if that strategy works, then he will simply continue to do that. The second strategy, though, if we are people who ignore those suggestions that, it, that are inside of ourselves, if we ignore those whispers of doubt about ourselves, if we believe that we have been saved somehow, and while we recognize our sinfulness, we still believe that God has saved us, and that if we continue to do our best and continue to strive to be holy, that we will one day enter into heaven. If we believe that, then the second strategy that I think that the devil uses is to try to get us to despair and to doubt because of what's going on around us, what's going on in our larger society or in our world or in our country or whatever it may be. If we don't give in to the idea that we are not worthy, then we can, he tries to get us to be overcome by doubt and despair because of what's going on around us. One of the things, I think, as I was sitting at the Catholic Charities Dinner in Terre Haute uh, this past Wednesday, you know, you hear not, not statistics even about our world, but just about how many people go hungry and young people go hungry in our neighborhood, in our own little community, let alone the fact that when you look around the world, 24,000 children die every day of hunger. You know, we, we see all of the statistics and all of the things that are going on about poverty and we hear the devil saying to us, why are you trying? Why are you trying to fight back? Give up. Despair. And especially when we have Jesus even telling us, the poor will always be with you. That despair and that doubt can creep in and we can look around the world and we can look around our society and there's a temptation to despair, to lose hope and to give up. We can look around at other things. We can see the attacks that are going on around the world against religious freedom. The numbers of Christians that are persecuted, especially in the third world, the number of stories that aren't reported on Yahoo News or wherever else we get our media. Basically, every third world country where Christians are at, they are persecuted. And in our own time and in our own day, of course, religious freedom is even under more and more attack in our own country. We can be tempted to despair when we look around the world. And the devil would love us to do that. The devil would love us to give up and to stop trying and to stop caring because of how impossible the odds seem when we look around at the larger picture. We can look around the world and despair and look around our own country and despair when we see the numbers of abortions that go on in our own country. A million and a half abortions every year. And when we look at the larger world, of course, that number skyrockets even higher. The devil plants word, seeds of doubt in our mind and tries to get us to despair, tries to get us to give up. We can see the deterioration of marriage when we look around our own country. We see what's going on in our larger society. And I think people can rightly start asking the question, does marriage mean anything? anymore? 
The devil can plant seeds of despair and doubt in our own minds, can get us to question whether or not it's worth fighting back, it's worth trying to do what God has asked. We see things like that. We see things like our own aid that we try to give to other countries and that first world countries offer third countries. Now that it's often being tied to contraception, we won't give you money unless you use contraception and abort your children. We see things like that and the devil tries to plant seeds of doubt in our mind and say, just give in. Give up. Don't try and fight. Don't try and help other people be saved. I think it was in a special way, uh, I have a, uh, a story that comes to mind every time I am tempted to look around the world and to despair and to give up. I lived with a, a priest for a brief moment, uh, for a brief couple of weeks one time, who did give up. Over Christmas break as a seminarian, you live in a, you know, you try to find a place to crash, basically a rectory, some parish to stay in. The seminary, you know, obviously shuts down for Christmas break and no 28 or 29 year old person wants to live at home. So um, look for a place. And so I found a, a church to stay at and I didn't know it when I moved in, but it became very quickly apparent that the priest was really in a dark place. I would come home at night, um, whether it was, you know, going over, going to mass in the evening or going out to dinner with friends. And every time I would come back to the rectory at night, every light would be out and, and uh, except for the television. The priest was engaged, you know, was, was getting drunk uh, and, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol. And so I would try and I didn't know what to do uh, other than just to try and kind of talk to him and see what was going on. And it was really interesting that, um, and unfortunate and sad one of the things that he kept talking about was his frustration that, that everything he was doing, nothing seemed to work. That, that his parish seemed to still be, you know, basically the same and that the world didn't seem to be changing. The devil got to him and he very quickly, actually very shortly after that Christmas vacation, left the priesthood. The devil planted seeds of doubt in his mind about the ability uh, to change the world and about what was going on in the larger picture around the world. And we are tempted to do that too sometimes. And when we are tempted, when we are tempted to either give up on ourselves because of what's going on inside of us or to give up because of what's going on in the larger world, we have the first reading today, which tells us God speaks to us and says, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Be strong, fear not. I think John Paul II, when you look and, and see all the things that he did, he traveled around the world for 20, 25 years. Basically, everywhere he went, his main message, be not afraid. He'd go around, be not afraid, be not afraid. Talking to young people, be not afraid. Talking to old people, be not afraid. Why? Because there is a lot of fear. There is a lot of despair. There is a lot of opportunity to doubt and to fear and to question what's going on in the world. The question is, will we give in to that? Will we give in to that despair? Will we write the world off as hopeless and just fold up shop and quit? Or will we continue to fight against poverty, against hunger, against despair, against abortion, against attacks on life, against attacks on religious freedom? Will we continue to believe that we can make a difference. The devil wants nothing more than for us to fold up shop, to fold up our tent, and to walk away and just care about ourselves. J.R.R. Tolkien, who's one of my favorite um, authors of all time, he wrote the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and he was a great Catholic, and he talked all the time about his Catholic faith and how it impacted everything that he wrote. And he said one time something that's always stuck with me. It's very... Of course, on the outside, it looks very depressing and very Catholic. Um, he said, as a Catholic, I see history as one long defeat. It's like, wow, that's great news. Um, as a Catholic, I see history as one long defeat. We've been told that the devil is the prince of this world. And so he's saying, I see history as one long defeat. But he says, we have been given, though, small glimpses 
of the final victory that we will win. We're given small glimpses. Maybe it's Thanksgiving dinner. You know, maybe it's a beautiful fall evening or a beautiful fall morning or a chance to be with friends or an opportunity to be with loved ones. Maybe it's a couple of years or, you know, decades of prosperity for, for a country. Whatever it may be, we're given small glimpses along the way. But we also recognize that, that history is basically one long defeat. The choice, though, we have, we have to A, recognize that, but B, be okay with that. And recognize that, yes, this world is passing away. But we're still asked to make a difference. We're still asked to not despair over that fact. We're still asked to try to pull a couple people back up on their feet to try and make a difference, to try and, and work against unjust laws, unjust practices, wherever we find it. J.R.R. Tolkien also has a great line in the Lord of the Rings trilogy where Gandalf basically says, you know, look, we don't choose the time we live in. We can't. We're born and we have no say in the matter. But what we can do is work hard to till that little plot of land that we've been given to uproot any kind of evil or injustice that we find in that little plot of land. That's what we're asked to do as Catholics. We're asked to not be afraid. We're asked to not despair over the fact that, yes, history is basically one long defeat. Will you quit, though, is the question that Jesus asks of us. Will you just fold up shop and quit, which is exactly what the devil wants? Or will we press on as a people of faith? trying to make a difference in the little plot of land that we've been asked to care for. May we not give up. May we be strong. May we fear not, as God is asking of us today.